We conclude Pac-12 Men's Basketball Media Day from Las Vegas with the Washington State Cougars and head coach Kyle Smith. And, uh, Coach, it's great to see you. Let's just start by getting a sense. How do you feel about your group right now? You know, I really like our team. Um, you know, a lot of new faces and been doing it long enough. Should have a decent pulse on what our talent looks like. I feel good about our talent. Really like our guys. Um, you'll get to meet them in a second, a couple of them. And, uh, but it's going to take a little time probably because we have so much new, but I, I do feel good about them. How, how do you approach that, Kyle, when, when, it, when you lose that many players? And it seems like everyone's dealing with it yeah. now. It, you know, you're recruiting high school players on some level, but the portal becomes a big deal. Do you just go in there and, and, and try and replace it with best available, or do you try and build out a team in the portal, you know what I'm saying? No, absolutely. I think it's a little bit of both. I think when we first arrived at Washington State and spend this will be our fifth year, so the first approach is obviously get the get the best talent, like NBA GMs. We got to get the best players, and then we kind of shape how we will play accordingly. And then we've built something, and we've been good inside. And I think our good uh, big talents, whether FA, Muhammad, Deshaun, those guys attract others. I think we have a really good front court group, so we'll continue down that path, and then. Um, and then we just got to pick and choose where they come from a little bit. It's just got to be nimble. To what degree? I mean, we, we, we can go through some of the, you know, you've got some <laughs> freshmen and you've got the transfers. Yeah. How's that thing going to fit together with the newcomers this year? I'm trying to figure it out. <laughs> but, um, no, I, I like I said, uh, we have three post players, I think, that are inexperienced at this level, but good good talents. Isaac Jones, transfer from Idaho, very good scorer, can score inside and out, good size and length. Uh, um, Oscar Clough, who's a junior college transfer, is a very good uh, low post player, kind of a throwback. I mean, I, I don't want to put the Jokic thing on him, but he's really a good passer, good nimble. And then, <laughs> and then Ruben uh, Chenulu, who's a freshman from the NBA Academy, who has uh, just got a big, big, strong, long athlete with a big heart and really plays hard. So they all kind of complement each other. And I think as we learn to play through those guys, that's whether we'll be, how good we'll be. And he also brought in a high-level guard from a championship program in Kansas. Yeah, absolutely. Great championship DNA in Joseph Yesifu, uh, guy that we tried to get when he left Drake. Um, and he's just a wonderful – he really fits more with our – even more so with our attitude as far as having a great attitude, great work ethic. He's a yes sir, no sir guy. Um, knows what it takes, so he's been in those, those battles. And we're going to lean hard on his maturity as much as anything. What kind of player is he, Kyle? He's an explosive combo. We'll play it. We'll right now probably be at the point for us, but he can really guard the ball. Um, he can really shoot it, and he can go on. He can really get it going scoring wise. But we're going to need his perimeter shooting with the size I mentioned. Um, looks a little like, and I don't know if he can be one, of those, but kind of like the those those UW kind of guards back in the day, the Isaiah, Nate Robinson type. You know, he's an explosive, smaller, strong, explosive guy that can uh, can get buckets. I know, obviously. Uh the Miles Rice battle with Hodgkin's lymphoma was something uh, that we, as much as we can't have followed, how's he yeah. doing? He's doing great. I was telling other people, and I forget about it, just because his attitude is, he's such a life-giving force. Anyone that's met him, he's really positive, optimistic through all that. And uh, just, um, he's been out for two years, and he's very talented and just needs to let him grow a little bit, let him feel himself and get, get going. So what was his timeline? Like, how long has he been back on the court? He's been out back on the court since the summer. Uh, I think I, I can't think remember, but I think he's been. As I said, I can't remember. It's like we're worried, you know, like coaching him on eggshells and like we're doing conditioning. Like you're you're worried about him, but like just after a couple of weeks, you're like oh, he's he's fine. And, and physically, physically, it hasn't been an issue that that's noticeable. Other than you know, it's just two years of rust. But I think mentally, as much as anything, him just getting back in the saddle. Yakimovsky's back senior year. Um, had to play a lot bigger than than he should have or yeah. was used to last year. Talk about him going back to kind of being who he was when he got to Washington State. You know, he hasn't really been healthy for us one year. It's been a, a hit. It hurt his groin his freshman year. Had a surgery that went into his sophomore year. And then last year he was dealing with the turf toe. Um, and he's just a stud. He's just gotten better as far as attitude, his confidence. And now he does – move more, play more small forward. Like I said, it'll probably be him, Jones, and one of the big fives. And that's what I think will be our strength. I think he, he gives you a presence at the three. The guy that, like, I think he had 16, 17 rebounds against UW last year. 
and he can bang threes. He's he's ball handling. We'll be able to play through him a little more like that as a perimeter guy, which I think is uh, again going to be will be big. What's the new? I don't want you to give away any secrets. I know you won't, but. What's the new data this year? What uh, what you guys uncover? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, my new data is that uh, it's like putting together a junior college team. So I'm leaning hard into uh, Jim Shaw, who's who's recruited a lot of junior college. It's it's not so much about data; it's about we got to get this thing put together quickly. Let's just say it's going to take some time. And normally, we'll let the data kind of chase the data, what who we should be playing out there. But kind of like I said, we got to reprogram, get it quickly and uh, hopefully return as much every year, but you never know. So do you have to simplify things in that? I, I do think so. Yeah. I think that's uh, that's been the challenge for me. And I, I think my druthers, it doesn't matter anymore, but it would be like you can get really good at a place like in Pullman or Washington State. You've got guys play together two, three, four years. Anyone would, and uh, that's not really the case. And that's been – there's been a lot of guys I would have said that the same about Mark Few, Gonzaga, you know, they have to, but then, I don't know, he plug and play, they keep it pretty good, so it's it's more about, you got to adjust and figure it out. Back-to-back post-seasons for this group, which is significant to go to the NIT two years in a row, you've got, you know, we've seen some of the net rankings, the schedules, like you've got that pretty dialed, so what does it take in this deep league this year to get to the NCAA tournament? Uh, you know, I think that's the next step for our program. I, like I said, I can, we were trying to build and obviously had some setbacks to so lose some guys, but if we're ever going to be good, you're going to have to get there. Um, and the schedule, I think our league's going to be really good. I think you guys, I know it's your job to promote it, but I just think just based on uh, like the talent that Cal's accumulated and making a jump, Oregon State's a year older and they got good young players and just the league top to bottom and not to mention Obviously, Arizona, USC, with one of the best point guards in the country. So I think, I think finish top half. You're, I mean, we, let's let's do it. Top half should get yeah. it. Let's here's, get six teams in. Here's my concern, though, Kyle. And and I agree with you. I think the league's going to be very good this year. But I think the league's going to be very good in January. I think there's a lot of teams like yours that a lot of new pieces, a lot of new stuff. That you know, by the time you get to January, you're going to be much better. But we also know how important November and December are in your net, in the league's net, and all that, so that you have a lot of teams in contention for an NCAA tournament. So I just hope that all you guys in your team and some others don't stumble in November and December trying to figure it out because you have all these new pieces. I, I agree. I, that's just said that's a challenge for us. I think one thing that I think will help, I don't know if it helped my mindset, we're not preparing for two league games two weeks in the season or whatever. I think that's that changes the way you think you do things a little bit. You're going to be um, – those games really – they're all meaningful, but you're building this thing, trying to get there and have to do that. And it's there's definitely – we have to do our job out of league or else it doesn't – you're right, it doesn't mean much. But I, I just think it will happen. I think the talent's good. The coaching's good. Um, you know, we'll see. What do you think of your schedule, the non-conference schedule? Non-conference, uh, I like it. A lot of home games. To be honest, I think <laughs> in the sense that we went losing a lot of guys, to be honest, we want to make sure that we are getting our one foot in front of the other, make sure we're building that way. I think that last year I thought we had we stayed healthy, we probably bit off a little more than we could chew on the non conference. But healthy it was the right it was the right move. I think if we had one or two more wins, and that's all it would have taken, we're an NCAA tournament team um, by the net. And so, but this team probably needs just a little patience early. Um, hopefully we can get it up quicker than that and uh, do our best in the league. Yeah, that's right. Get better while you're still winning. Yeah, you got to win. Yeah. Winning winning is a great teacher. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have a media question in the front right with Cindy. I like this one. Hi, Coach. Cindy Brunson, Pac-12 Network, NBC Sports. We know on the women's side for Coach E, it's Charlie Sledger Walker. She is the straw that stirs the drink. Who is that player on your roster? Yet to be determined, but I do think um, I think Joseph Yesifu is going to be – it's really important to us because he can score, he can lead. He's been a winning program. I think Isaac Jones would have her best chance to be our leading scorer. And I think Andre uh, Yakimovsky with his leadership in – and he's capable, just do it all, all around guy. And with his experience, is going to help lead this group. Um, and then we'll be good at the five, I think. It's just going to be a, two of them there. They're pretty good. You mentioned the experience of Yesifu coming from Kansas. Yes. How does that show itself at this time of a year 
early before you've even started playing games in practice? Uh, just his, his way he uh, approaches practice. Uh, is, he's, a, he's a pro. He's, he's got a confidence about him. Like, you know, you do internal leadership audits with your team and players, part of, part of the analytics. And quickly, very quickly, he had a lot of votes for leadership. And from the players, and you don't know, and that's hard, you know. Especially, I think it's a testament to our group; they understand what he's about, and they look, you know, like he has that natural type leadership ability. Yeah, that's obviously stuff for you, coaches. But do the do the players really buy into that stuff? Do they? Do they? I mean, the analytic piece. Yeah, yeah. Or the, just, um, yeah, I think they do. I think you. They really do. Um, I think our attitude's good. They're, they're probably too compliant sometimes. I kind of want to do their own thing, but. But just the idea, they, they definitely buy into what they vote on. <laughs> when, they, when they say this or later, they're, they're, they're telling me who it is. And it's nice when you feel like, oh, I really like, you know, this guy's about the right stuff. And you're, you get that feedback from your players. They see the same thing we do. It's not always like that. So leadership is an analytic, you're saying? You can't, the data you yeah, get yeah, from the yeah absolutely. I'm just saying that part of the analytics is like, hey, this guy scores very high in these, these, these characters. Let's follow that lead. Our players are telling us to follow them, and we like them. Let's go. Yeah.